What's up, Navigation Traders? Welcome to Holiday Edition, the weekly video update. Today's Friday, December 27th. Obviously, we had a shortened week of trading with December 24th being a half day and then Christmas on the 25th being closed altogether. So fewer alerts. Uh, by the way, let's see, next week on New Year's Day. So the markets open New Year's Eve, the markets closed on New Year's Day. So uh, I'll, I'll post in the community just to confirm that early next week. Uh, but that is the situation. So before we jump into the alerts, let's take a look at the community and see who got caught being hot this week. Help me in congratulating Andrew K. Andrew's been in the community for just a few weeks, but jumped into the fire with both feet, uh, answering a lot of questions, adding suggestions, just overall providing value to the community, which is what it's all about. So thank you, Andrew. Congrats. You got caught being hot. Let's go to the alerts starting on the 23rd, which is Monday. Started out with an opening adjusting trade in gold. So basically what we did here is we we opened one and then we closed our uh, Feb position. And so essentially it's kind of, you, you can almost think of it as rolling. We don't technically roll iron condors because they're four-legged spreads, but we closed that one, opened another one to extend that duration, keep that, keep that position going in GC. Now, if we look at GLD, which is the corresponding ETF, what you'll see here is that uh, you know, at the time we put this on, implied volatility actually wasn't as high as it is now, but it was kind of like it was the next highest thing on the board. You know, we've had high IV in bonds and nat gas, and that's about it. With earnings kind of going by the wayside and not picking up again until the middle of January, uh, we don't have a lot of options. So we wanted to continue to stay small, stay active, still continue to sell premium because you because even if implied volatility is low, there is still a positive expectation, uh, an expectation of positive returns. Uh, we just want to keep our position size smaller because we don't want to get caught in a situation where implied volatility really goes through the roof. And then we, you know, we put the position on with low IV. So still want to stay active. So we went ahead and re-entered in, um, in gold. So if you take a look at that position, uh, Price has gone up a little bit since then, so we're just right of center and just playing the waiting game for some more theta decay in GC. Next trade, so we, we opened that one, closed that one. Next trade was a, a rolling adjusting trade in SMH. So uh, I, I talked about this on a video earlier this week, and then also there was some posting in the community. So if you didn't see that, you can go back and check those posts out. But basically what happened is overnight this night, we got assigned on 200 short shares of stock from our short calls. And so what we did is we just bought that back along with bought back the, the remaining short puts. We were at a point where we're at 25 days to expiration. So we were going to be rolling this trade this week anyway. And so we just went ahead and closed that out and then repositioned our short strangle in the next cycle with, in February with 60 days to expiration. Uh, that hasn't moved much since we did that roll. So if we take a look, it's price is pretty well dead centered here. So just playing the waiting game on SMH. Next trade, opening trade in Shopify. So Shopify, Shopify has been kind of on fire to the upside. If we take a look at the charts here, you know, just a, just a really steep move to the upside. Shopify, um, if you've ever bought anything online and it wasn't on Amazon, there's a really high chance that it probably was through a Shopify platform. That's what a lot of these uh, e-commerce companies, uh, companies that sell physical products online, they use Shopify as their platform. And obviously with the record holiday sales that we've already seen, um, you know, the price of Shopify has just exploded. And so, which, it, and the other thing that's interesting is you'll see here is even with the price going higher, Look what happened to implied volatility. Implied volatility has continued to expand as well. And earnings isn't till way out here uh, around the middle of February. So um, seeing some uh, explosive move to the upside and an expansion of implied volatility, which is creating an opportunity to put on some ducks. In this case, we did a reverse iron duck in Shopify. 
The price is hanging out right here, just inside the duck head. This one uh, expires January 10th, so we'll probably wait till closer to that to take that off unless it just continues to explode higher all the way up into that 430 mark. So if we go back to the chart, we've got all the way up to here, you know, before we before we uh, need to, to do anything on, on that. But you know, hopefully it just kind of consolidates or potentially pulls back a little bit and just kind of hangs out here and then ends up in the duck head. But we'll see what happens. Next trade, opening trade in Roku. So Roku's kind of been all over the board as well. We did a, a, a regular iron duck in Roku. And if we take a look at chart, I mean, it's just been up and down and up and down, up and down. And so um, this is kind of the uh, same thing where price is hanging out right here, just inside the duck head, just, just the reverse. So this is a regular iron duck where the Shopify was a reverse iron duck. So same expiration. Uh, we've got till the f not next Friday, but the following Friday uh, to, to hold on to that. So we'll see what happens in Roku. Next trade, opening adjusting trade in Natty Gas. We put this one on today with implied volatility staying nice and high. Uh, we went ahead and added to our Nat Gas position. Uh, our previous position is has about 30 some days. This one we put on with 60 days to kind of spread out those uh, durations. And so let's take a look at our Natty Gas position. So here's the one that we had on before. This is our inverted strangle that we've been that we've been uh, trading for, for a few months. And then um, this one, and this one has, how many days? 32. And then the one we just put on was 60 days to expiration. Pretty well centered here. Now look at this, now look at the slope of the profit line. That just really speaks, you know, it's really steep over here on the upside and it's really, uh, uh, it's a lot flatter if price were to go down. And that's just due to the skew and the options uh, on the calls versus the puts, but you can see price is pretty well centered here. And I don't mind that slope here, uh, just because we also have this one, which we could use some more upside. So it kind of balances each other uh, balances each other out uh, between the two different positions we have in that gas. Next trade, opening trade in forward slash CL. So we added a, a new iron duck with 19 days to expiration in CL. So let's check that out. Uh, I did get one question in the community uh, because on this uh, trade we collected, what do we collect here? Uh, 61 cents. So, but remember, oil is, you, you, whereas uh, in equities we would multiply that times 100, so that'd be $61 per contract, but in oil you multiply that times 1,000, so your credit is actually $610 in, in real money. Okay, so, you know, part of the class said on equity options, we, we typically don't want to collect less than a dollar, but that's only on equity options. When it comes to future options, they're a different animal, and you can still collect enough credit to make the, the trade worthwhile, even if you're collecting under a buck. And in fact, on a, on a, uh, on a position like oil, since uh, the spreads are uh, 0.5 wide, you know, half a point wide on our, on our call side, we're typically never going to collect a dollar. We're going to collect. We're going to try to collect over fifty cents to create that no risk to the upside. So let's take a look at oil, and here's what it looks like here. We've got over an eighty-five percent probability of profit, and price is hanging out right here, pretty close to where we put it on in the duck beak. Next trade, opening trade in Amazon. So we put on a a, a new reverse iron duck in Amazon. Uh, Amazon announced that they did. I think it was quadruple the amount of um, sales uh, on a specific in a specific period than they did the same time last year, which is just nuts. So had a big explosion yesterday in price to the upside. We didn't have a position on. We just put this one on today, and with that explosion, it created a little bit of uh, uh, juice in those call spreads. So we did a reverse iron duck. And so you can see prices moved down since we put this on. So price is hanging out right here. Uh, got a lot, lot more room to the upside uh, to get into that duck head. And we did this with just seven days to expiration. So these expire next Friday. Next Friday is the last trading day. So um, you'll see what happens. Hopefully we can get a little duck head action in Amazon. 
Next trade, opening adjusting trade in our friend ZW, wheat. So we added an iron condor in wheat with 56 days to expiration. And we have a, another one in the previous cycle. So let's take a look at our wheat position. So this is the one that we put on and with 56 days. You can see prices hanging out right here. And then the other one that we have on is this one here. And you can see prices hanging out near the upper end of the range. Uh, wheat had a decent move higher today, or the last couple days actually, getting us close to that break-even point. And so what we'll do if we take off just the... Um, just the call side, and we take a look at just the untested side. You still, you can see we just got a tiny bit of profit left in those, a little bit of, little bit of premium left in those. So if price stays here or goes a little bit higher in the next week, we're going to close out that untested side. We're going to close out that put vertical side, and then we'll just keep that remaining uh, call vertical side on. But we're in decent shape. I want to give it a little bit, uh, a little bit more time over the weekend. Of course, if if price draws back down into center, we'll just keep it and continue to manage as we teach. Lastly, closing trade in RUT. So we had a weekly double calendar on in RUT. Uh, today was the last trading day, so we needed to exit. Ended up booking a little bit of a profit. Um, RUT actually pulled back a little bit for us, which was great. Um, I talked about in, in yesterday's video, I was like, oh, you know, if we can just get a tiny little pullback, we can get out of this with a profit, and that's what happened. So ended up booking a little bit of a profit, and, uh, and so we are out of that. So we'll look to potentially put on another weekly double calendar next week if the environment warrants doing so. All right, so those are all the alerts. Let's take a look at some of our other positions, starting with ES. We've got this long put vertical that we've been holding for the short delta exposure. Uh, price is hanging out right inside the range there. I mentioned gold. I mentioned natty gas. Bonds. We've got two pieces on in bonds. One is this 161 straddle. So it was a strangle. We adjusted into a straddle. Price is hanging out up here. If price continues lower, and, and the juice gets sucked out of these calls, then we will roll our calls down. Uh, on this piece, we've got 28 days to expiration, so even towards the end of next week, we may look to roll that out to March, um, but we'll see what happens. And then um, the, the other piece that we have on here is another strangle. You can see prices hanging out right here, and so just waiting for some more theta to decay on that piece. I mentioned wheat. Apple continues to be strong. It's outside of our range on our long put vertical that we're holding for short delta. Uh, just looking for some downside to benefit that. Mentioned Amazon. Uh, DE, John Deere, same kind of story. Oh, we've got a short call vertical here. Price is just outside of our range. So looking for some downside in Deere. DIA, we've got two sets of short call verticals. One is just at the break even, just outside our range. The one in January, which has 21 days. And then our Feb piece, similar situation, same position, just a different duration. So hanging out right here near our break even. FedEx. Okay, so this one, by the time you are watching this, uh, we will have sent out an alert. I tried to get filled on this for 99 cents. Remember, our call spread is a dollar wide. So that's our beak. Um, and so we wanted to get out for under a dollar. So we had an order in at 99 cents, didn't get filled. So we're just going to let this expire. It's so far out here. Uh, toss, if you're trading on toss, toss does not charge any exercise or assignment fees. So you can just let that expire, keep that beak profit and, and not pay any uh, commission. So we didn't want to pay up on this, pay a commission plus pay over a dollar. Uh, so in this case, we're just letting it expire and keeping that beak profit. Google, we've got an iron ducking Google. And price is hanging out up here in the beak. Uh, I put this price slice right here. Uh, these expire next Friday. So we've, uh, we've still got a, about a 33% chance that price could come back down in here the, to the duck head area. So we will keep that on for now. IWM, we've got this, uh, again, long put vertical here for that short delta exposure just inside of our range here. Speaking of short delta, we're about three to one on our short delta versus our theta ratio. So in line with our, our range that we like to keep. QQQ, very similar to DIA. We've got one spread in Jan that's just outside of our range. And then we've got one spread in Feb that's just outside of our range. So 
like I was saying, if we could just get a little bit of a pullback in this, a little bit of relief in this death march higher, <laughs> that would be much, much warranted. Much welcome, I should say. Uh, I mentioned Roku, I uh, mentioned Shopify, I mentioned SMH, SPX. Uh, so we've got an iron duck in SPX. I'd like to add another one or two ducks in SPX, but I mean, price just hasn't moved. I don't want to load up anymore at this at this price level. Uh, again, I'd like to see some downside movement before we add another duck, but um, this one is January 10th. So not next Friday, but the Friday after this one expires. So we've got about 14 days. SPY, we've got this short call vertical here. Price is right inside our range right here. Looking for some more downside to benefit that. Tesla. Okay, so Tesla, I was gonna, I actually had an order to try to take this one off today. You know, we like to get to a point, if it's if it's under 10% uh, chance of getting down into our duck hit area, we'll, we'll look to take this off. This is close enough, this is about 12%. I put an order in, never got filled, so again, I'm just gonna wait. Um, you know, this we do have a full week, so I may pay up a couple pennies early next week if it's still hanging out up here, or if it, you know, of course, if it goes higher, uh, we'll just look to get out of that because then you got just a very little chance of getting back to where we really want it to. Might as well just book those profits and redeploy. And then lastly, XLK, this one's run higher. We will, uh, this is the one that we accidentally rolled to the weekly expiration, so we've only got seven days. Uh, but we'll so we'll look to roll this next week and we'll roll that out to the Feb cycle, which at this point has 56 days. Uh, and so that's our plan in XLK. So those are all the alerts. Those are all the positions. Everybody have a great weekend. Look forward to a new 2020. Everybody have a good one. Talk to you soon.